So Eileen, regarding therapy, we know that a significant percentage of patients are diagnosed in an advanced stage. The typical question that I'm asked by my patients and family members, which is something that I strongly encourage them to do, is should I participate in a clinical study? Right, so clinical trials are, are the future and how we're mm. going to make progress in this disease. And I think we w really want to increase the awareness and the understanding of what a clinical trial is for uh, what it means for a patient, because there's a lot of, I would say, misunderstanding around mm -hmm. this topic. So clinical trials in the setting of pancreas cancer where it's spread have several goals. Early clinical trials are we're looking at what's the best dose of a medication, what's the best schedule, what's the range of side effects that might be evident, and that might be called a phase one trial. A phase two trial is where we've seen that there is uh, some evidence of benefit and we're looking to more fully understand what the impacts on the disease are. And then a phase three trial is what we call a late stage trial. There are often potentially practice changing uh, studies where we're comparing a new treatment to a standard of care. And the, f the field of oncology has been critiqued in a way that we don't encourage enough uh, participation in clinical trials. Uh, often there's a lot of concern that patients aren't getting effective treatments. And we would say even for early stage trials, a lot of times we're adding a new drug to an accepted standard and that may be a way to um, augment uh, outcomes. And it's not that a person is getting a treatment where there's no understanding at all of what the potential benefits are. You know, the statistics in, in pancreas cancer are that about four to five percent of adults uh, with pancreas cancer go on a clinical trial and as a, a community of people invested in improving the outcomes mm -hmm. for people with pancreas cancer, we would love to see that number doubled or tripled. And a parallel is in the pediatric cancer population where the vast majority of young children with cancer will go on a clinical trial and, and that's our, our goal to sort of uh, to be able to, to do that in, in pancreas cancer because new drugs, new treatment modalities, uh, that's, that's the way of the future and how we're going to improve outcomes in this disease. I think we're all in agreement on how important it is to encourage our patients into joining clinical studies, clinical trials, and uh, I don't think that we have been doing a very good job in doing so. I always try to stress my patients that this is the only way that they feel it's truly going to continue to advance. Yes, I think that's a message we really want to uh, emphasize, that participation in clinical trials is very important. And, and there's even a sense that, that patients may get improved care as, as part of clinical trials. They're being monitored closely and, and followed carefully. Um, there's very careful evaluation of symptoms and side effects early and rigorously on an ongoing basis and it's how we hope to improve outcomes in this disease. Sometimes there's concerns that they may be getting a placebo or an ineffective treatment and you know we often want to explain that a lot of times clinical trials is building on a current standard and adding a new medication to that and that there are very rigorous and ongoing evaluations for safety and for understanding whether there's an added benefit for that particular approach. So whether it be in the post-operative setting, whether it be in the setting of localized non-operable disease, or perhaps even the biggest area where clinical trials have an important and increasing value is in the treatment of metastatic pancreas cancer where mm -hmm. our goals are non-curative. Uh, and here we know from clinical trials in the last few years that we've improved outcomes for, for people with pancreas cancer. And perhaps I might give a couple of examples here to illustrate this point. Mm -hmm. So for a subset of people with pancreas cancer, which is spread, who have a high level of functioning, we've shown that a combination of uh, several uh, medications, uh, the acronym is called Fulfirinox, and that involves a medication called 5-FU, Arenutican, Oxaliplatin, and a vitamin called Leucovorin. That combination has been shown to improve the ability to shrink the cancer, to control the disease, to extend life, and, really important point, that 
when pancreas cancer is controlled, people's quality of life is better for longer. And that's a really key message. So if this disease is not being effectively controlled and the cancer is progressing or evolving, people's quality of life you know, often starts to deteriorate. So that's our biggest reason. We may not be able to cure the cancer, but we would hope with effective treatment and supportive care to improve outcomes uh, that are tangible and important to, to patients and families. Another example, which is an even more recent example uh, and very topical at the moment, is the emerging combination of gemcitabine and nab-paclitaxel. Uh, and that particular combination is, is also going to become uh, embraced as a treatment for pancreas cancer when it is spread. And the natural development of that is it's going to be looked at in earlier stage disease as well. So I think we're encouraged and enthused and excited uh, about these developments that you know, we are beginning to see you know, real and meaningful improvements in, in outcomes. Uh, for, for pancreas cancer, again, even in the setting where it's not possible to operate. Absolutely, and I think that's very encouraging also for the patients to see that there's so much being done. Right. That brings me also to another question. How can the patients look for where, particularly near from where they live, it's a clinical study going on, how can they participate when the local a, a, a doctors where they're getting treated may not offer you know, a new treatment or a clinical trial. What can we tell our patients in that regards? Where can they go? So that's an excellent question and I think one we want to highlight here is that there are a lot of resources available. So a referral to a center of expertise and special center in pancreas cancer, that's one step. I think there's a tremendous amount being done by the patient advocacy organizations. Mm -hmm. So for example, the National Pancreas Foundation, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, the Lusgarten Foundation. Uh, these are excellent resources for guiding patients and families to, uh, to information regarding clinical trials and indeed just uh, information about pancreas cancer in general. There are some also very informative uh, websites uh, that have high quality and uh, correct information mm -hmm. uh, that's helpful also for guiding patients and families to the, to the right setting. And that's, that's something that we recognize uh, these resources aren't always accessible to patients and families and there isn't often a high awareness about this and that's a really important message that we want to get out here. Absolutely. Thank you, Eileen.